close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. If your thoughts wander off, you don't have to follow them. You don't have to be interested in them at all. Stay interested in the breath, because the breath is the energy of life. It's the energy that keeps the body and the mind together. So you want to make sure that it's good. How does the breath feel right now? If you stay with it for a while, you begin to realize certain kinds of breathing are good for the body and others are not. Well, you can change. If the way you're breathing is not good right now, you can make it longer, shorter, heavier, lighter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. Try to pay attention and see what really does feel right for the body right now. This gives you a good foundation. Because if the mind is hungry for pleasure, it's going to go for anything it sees. And it can justify it in any way at all. But if you give it a sense of pleasure, a sense of well-being simply by the way you breathe, then it's a lot less likely to want to go for unskillful things, a lot less likely to lie to itself about why it's going for those things. This quality of truthfulness is an important part of learning to be a good human being, learning to find happiness. We're getting close to the time of the Buddha's awakening. It's Wisakha Bucha is going to be in nine days. It's the day that he was, on which he was born, and then 35 years later on the same day, the same full moon in May, he gained awakening, and 45 years after that, on the full, dun minute, full moon day in May, he passed away. We remember these events because they have an impact on our lives, that, because he showed that it is through human action, you can find your happiness. You don't have to depend on outside forces, or it's not something that just floats by. It's something you can bring about long-term happiness through your own actions. And so it's good to commemorate that. This is an, probably the most important event in, in human history, showing that human beings can do this, and we have the ability to find true happiness if we pay careful attention, if we're really true. So one way of sh showing our truth, as the Buddha said, is you Practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. At the time of he was dying, they said that the heavenly hosts were sprinkling down flowers and playing music and sprinkling down incense. And he says, this is not the right way to pay respect to the Buddha. The right way is to take his teaching and put it into practice. Practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma. It's not making excuses, saying, well, I can't do that. I'd have to be a superhuman being to do this kind of thing. It's not. You can do it. Everybody can do it. As the Buddha said, if it wasn't something human beings could do, he wouldn't teach it. The fact that we can see that some of the ways we behave are unskillful and others are more skillful, and we can choose to abandon the unskillful and develop the skillful ones. If we couldn't do that, he said he wouldn't have taught. But we can all do that. It's simply a question of making up our mind whether we're ready for it or not. And the question, of course, you want to ask yourself is, have you suffered enough? Do you want to suffer more? If not, you can give his teachings a try. He, very basic things. He says the way to find happiness is to be generous, observe the precepts, and meditate, develop good qualities in mind, especially qualities of goodwill. These three things, he said, just the activity itself is a form of happiness, and they lead to a happiness that's really long term. So look at your life and think about this this week. This is the week we get ready to prepare to pay homage to the Buddha. You pay homage to the Buddha through your practice of the Dharma. By being generous, by following the precepts, and by developing goodwill for everybody. doesn't mean you have to like everybody, but you do want to make up your mind that what you're going to do is not going to harm anybody. It's not going to get in the way of their true happiness. Make up your mind and to act in this way, and not find excuses to say, well, maybe next year, maybe next lifetime, or whatever. Because we don't know about next year and next lifetime, but we do know about now. We've got the opportunity right now, so take advantage of it right now. And the results will appear, both right now and on into the future. So try to be true in the practice, and the practice will show its truth to you as you see the benefits appearing in your own heart.